I don't care how negative your the comment that someone leaves you is, you always have to respond with the three words and create a sentence. I understand, I appreciate, and I agree. And you can never use the word but. So I understand that that's how you feel. And I appreciate the feedback because we're a new company that's growing and we're learning. This is our first go around and I will take under advisement. And I appreciate that I will actually work towards making the product better based on your comment. That's it. We help people with ideas get them to revenue. All right, welcome back to the 52 Launch Podcast. I'm Number kidding. 765. Well, you know what? I was I lost count, so I'm going to say this is I'm gonna make episode it up. number one in our new podcast facility. Right, so that sounds good. Um, as you can see, a little upgrade. We've got a really cool uh, podcast room now, so we don't have to have the headphones on in the middle of our staff. We're actually in a nice soundproof room. Yeah, I can show off the little hair I have. Um, but yeah, welcome. This is this is really cool. We've been really looking to get back to doing something like this. So, uh, yeah, I interrupted Peter. Yeah, Peter, yeah, yeah. Dan, nice to see all you. Nice folks. to see you guys again. So, where do you want to start, Mister Gagne? All right. Well, I told Peter today that we were gonna just wing it. Um, not really. We have some topics to talk about, but. Um, Again, thankfully, um, our manufacturing has started picking back up overseas, yeah. which has kind of been a struggle, obviously, for Shipping not costs just are us, coming down. but for everybody in the in the world. Um, and we're starting to get um, you know deliveries on a weekly basis now of uh, new products. Um, and with that, we're starting to market these products for our clients. And I personally want to talk a little bit about um, expectations because <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, we really appreciate people hiring us to help them bring their products to market, but um, we have to pump the brakes a little bit because we are not a get-rich-quick scheme. Well, I don't it think takes... there's any such thing as <laughs> any business being a get-rich-quick scheme. Exactly. It takes time to build a business. Um, a, a lot of people don't see behind the scenes. They see a company become successful, but they're not... They're not looking at the history of that company. They may have started 10 years ago. So uh, sometimes we use the word they're, they're an instant success 10 years in the making or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, so, Well, and sometimes what you see is success. Oh, my God, that company did a million dollars in sales. I guarantee you any company that's done a million dollars in sales is disappointed in their sales. Right. Right, because your goals are always higher and you're always trying to achieve more. Um, and so, even though that's a good accolade, I don't think you're ever in business. I don't think anybody in business is ever happy with the results. Right. And and that's what makes business people right. So, I, I think you're right. This is a good topic of expectations of of multiple levels. Right. There's a lot of different things that you've got to put your hat on. And this isn't just for our clients. This is anybody that's an entrepreneur bringing a, or an inventor that's bringing a product to market. There is the importance of of being good with your invention and there's and you get the right product to market. But this is where you got to change hats and you got to really understand and be confident in your product because the expectations aren't going to be there at the volume or at the numbers that you're looking for in the in the first little bit. Right. And what would they be if, if you were going to retail? I mean, it takes a long time to break into a retailer. Um, with your product, you know, let's go back 15 years before Amazon was even a company. Your only option was to go hustle your product at at a retailer and Knock try to door. yeah try to get your product in on a test market and and go through that route. Now with Amazon, it has opened up the playing field for everybody now to bring a product to market. Except it just doesn't happen where you put it up on Amazon and you start selling. You have to market just like you would at that retailer. Well, I think you missed a point at the retailer. When, you, when you're a brand new product and you go to a retailer and you knock on their door and you beg them to be on their shelf, who's got leverage? <laughs> exactly. Like, you, you know, at that point, you've got no terms to dictate. If they actually give you the opportunity, here, here's the way it works. If you want to be, the, if you want that opportunity, you've got to write a check to get the other client or other product off that shelf to put yours in. Right. Like, there's, there's only so much real estate in that store. Only it's so all accounted estate, for. Right. So, so <laughs> that's a very unrealistic, very expensive proposition to get to market. So, you know, I, I agree. Amazon has opened the playing field. Now, who has leverage in the Amazon world? It's still Amazon, right? It's their marketplace. So, if they tell you this is how it works, you better listen to figure out how it works. And and look, at there's good reason why Amazon, Facebook, it, you know, they don't just let a brand new product run off and get to market. Guess why? 
right? Because yeah. they're trying to protect. Like, there's all kinds of scam products out there that are launching every day that are trying to take advantage of people. So they're doing a fantastic job of making sure that those clients and those scammers don't get through but guess what that makes it harder for it does the people that are really <clears throat> trying to get a product through so you know when you're getting online today you really have to spend your time um analyzing the analytics of the of the algorithm and understanding what steps you need to get to before you can get to that explosive level it is this amazon is the slowest way to, to grow a business and get rich right right because in the beginning you really need to understand your target audience, your market, you've got to put some test markets in there, but you also have to have Amazon trust you and trust that you're doing the right thing and that your product's delivering. And when Amazon sees, okay, you've got 90 days of sales and, and your returns are low, they open up more opportunity for you. But if they see that your returns are high, well then, you know, you got to realize that, okay, maybe it's because you're not explaining it the way it should be, right? So Peter, for those yeah. of uh, you know our audience and anybody else out there that is not a mathematician, and really did well at gymnastics. I got all A's there. Uh, how do you explain algorithms? What does that even mean? And data and analytics when you're talking about selling a product? What the hell does all that mean? Well, so look at I'll, I'll <clears throat> firstly admit that I have we have way smarter people on the team than I am. So mm -hmm. I've I've learned this from them, and I've also learned it along the way. Algorithms are just it's it's code that's written to say you know if then then do this right if that happens then do this and that algorithm really is okay when when you sell um, a percentage of your inventory and you're constantly your travel rate so let, let's just do the math if I'm selling if I have a hundred units in stock and I'm selling ten a day then there's a ratio there that the algorithm recognizes right so they now know that I'm selling ten a day and that in ten days I'm going to be out of inventory so that algorithm will say hey Pete, you got to bring, you got to send in another 200 items because, you know, we know that you're going to probably get to 12 to 15 units per, per day. And we want to make sure that we have a, a, the right supply of inventory on hand at all time, right? This is where Amazon starts to say, okay, we, we start recognizing the, the performers in the small micro, you know, think about it, a, a 12, uh, um, 10 sales a, a day or, or uh, you know, with 100 units versus 10,000 sales a day with 100,000 units. The ratio is the same. So you have the opportunity to be a small seller on Amazon, but still break that ratio where you're like, you're a top performer. You, they see that you're growing. And that's really where a lot of people don't have the patience for it, right? They right. just want to throw money at it. And that's the most dangerous way to fail on Amazon. It is, it is calculated spending. It is testing. And then it is feeding and funding the keywords that are bringing you the type of business that you want. So let me ask you this question before I forget. It, so we have several clients that are just starting to advertise on Amazon, and we we, we do a three month contract. And you need at least that. That's what I'm we being do told. Six. We do six. Yeah, okay, we do so six. it's six. And you know, it's data collection. We'll have for the a, first six months. Is it an, a once a month um, review or is it a three month review? No, no. We usually do once once a week. I mean, once a month or, or twice a month, depending on what service okay. you, you take us on for. So when we have a client that comes in for a review after say three months, because that's at the top of my head because it just happened. Yep. Um, and they were really bummed out that they were only selling you know ten a week, mm -hmm. um, and they were very disappointed in that. Um, explain why. Because I was in that same meeting, why that's that's actually really good, right? Because you know, the first, first off, the metrics of sales isn't the end result; it never is. It, it, it's it's a it's a funnel. How many impressions did I get? How many came to whatever page, whether I'm on Amazon or whether I'm on uh, our own website? How many people then? clicked on the product that we had and then how many of those put it in the cart to check out and then how many of those actually checked out and purchased, right? That is your funnel to a sale. Once you understand the data in that, and it really takes a large volume, that's that's the first step. Now, even before you get to that, you have to understand where are you putting your ad? Who am I showing it to? You know, if, if you go fishing with the wrong bait in the wrong place, you'll, you're not going to catch a fish. You can spend hours and you can spend thousands of dollars on the throwing as much bait in that water as you want and you're never going to get the results. So again, it's really understanding that is my creative, which is our bait, it's our, they call it clickbait, is our creative meet, meeting the expectations of the end consumer that we're showing it to. I'm going to put it to you this way. How many, time, how many things do you walk by just at a grocery store on a regular day, like when you go shopping, and you don't buy? Well, 
hundreds, if not thousands. Uh, what, what percentage of things do you buy that are available to you in a grocery store once a week when you go in? Yeah. It's it's point zero yeah, zero one yeah, percent, small. right? It's yep. a very small percentage. So so again, you have to understand. Even though that we're showing the right people the ad, there's other scenarios that they have to do as consumers. First of all, they're going to look at your reviews, right? No one wants to buy like new products. No one's going to take a chance on that. Some people will go, "Wow, that's a great idea," and they're just impulse buyers. So that's who we're actually looking for right. first. But you also have people that are going to look at your product and go out it's a great idea and then put it on the sh- on the cart but then like yeah you know do i really want to spend i mean look at everyone can put their own this hat on we're all consumers at the end of the day we've all put things in the cart online and left it there right <laughs> i just did this morning yep <laughs> yeah so so you know so this is where again the expectation of the entrepreneur or the business person is why'd you leave it in the freaking cart like you want to go, you want to jump on the screen and you want to start typing to people. Like, come on, like, <laughs> like what's going on? Why aren't you buying this? Right. Look at appreciate that that they took the step to get there, and it's a numbers game. Some people eventually will go back. Now, the good part is, is that if they've done those things and you've got a good retargeting campaign, then we can go back now and be in all the places that they're going fishing, where they're you know they want to go on this website and get a recipe. Boom, there's your product again. If you want to go and you know look up what the weather's like, boom, there's your product again. Right? That's called that's that's the that's the reinforcement of your initial product to remind people, hey, you did like this the first time, right? And right. Now it's now it's maybe a video instead of like the the creative. And eventually, you know, we either wear them down or they say. So that's why we do multiple shots. We do (laughs) multiple creatives. You you have to have different creatives for different purposes, right? And this is why it gets, it gets, look at it, it gets. So the number one expense in marketing today is content creation. Right. Okay. And and this is why we have an entire team. Brennan is uh, just a new member. And, you know, this is content. What we're doing here right now is content. So people understand that, um, look, I'd rather they learn from this to understand the expectations because. It is fun. <laughs> it is frustrating, but this right. is the fun part. And if you're going to be an int- you know, if you're going to be an inventor and you and you think that your idea is worth everything, it's not. It's actually having the patience and the expectation to realize that, and more so the confidence. I have confidence written down. You have to have the confidence in your product that the way it is 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 what consumers are looking for. You know, and and if you don't have that confidence, you can't sell. All right, so that's a great segue into my next question. Yep. So again. Um, happened this week it's happened plenty of times in the past it's actually happened to me um (laughs) with our own products when you see someone writing back saying that your product is junk and that i wouldn't buy that piece of shit if you gave it to me or that's a stupid idea or that's way too expensive like what do you do in that situation so it depends on who you are. Me, I, I <laughs> smile because I know my ads are working. Right. Right. The negative comments will come up first. You're right. going to, I don't care. Look at Apple. Apple has people that hate them. Right. Right. And and there's perfect, there's no such thing as a perfect product. So let, let's get that out of the way. Right. A, at the end of the day, you're looking to be 60% happiness. So that's kind of the metric. I, I And that's just a bullshit metric I make up because at, at the end of the day, 100%, you, you'd never char- you'd never be able to charge enough to get 100%. Like, that's just it's the perfect product doesn't exist. Right. You know, 60% <clears throat> is what we all buy. And think about this. How many times do you have a product that you're like, you just bought, it works well, but it's not perfect. Do you, do you throw it out? No. <laughs> no, I use it. It's I got drawers full of them. I got a garage full of them. Like, right. you know, there's tools that, eh, you know, it's too heavy. It's too light. It's, it's There's always something I can complain about. But at the end of the day, I own the tool and I use it. Right. At the end of the day, I, I, whatever I bought, it, it's, if it instantly makes me, you know, utilize it in a happy manner, uh, I'm, I'm never going to question whether, well, I wish that was a better product or I wish they did this and that. It's a very small percentage of people. So, do you, so I'm assuming it's not appropriate to respond back to no. a negative comment. No, I, I would ignore it. Look at, I, I, our advice now to, to everybody is like, once you, once you launch, go take a vacation. <laughs> Get away, just shut your show, social media off. In fact, look, I don't, you might not even know this, but we've taken you off all social media. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not allowed to respond at all. Oh, and, and, well, and look at I wouldn't even know where to go. <laughs> well, so who, who do we have the, the, this week, right? And, and they said, um, there was a comment and, and I said, well, you know, what they should do is buy a better boot. Our product is really good. Right. If it doesn't work, in that client, in, in that person's situation, well, then they, sh- they should go change the other material that they're, they're the other part of the, the clothing that they're wearing <laughs> and get one that does work. Because right. all the ones we tested, this works. Right. Right. So we can't be 
everything to everybody. Right. And in some cases, it's not going to work. Well, I think, you know, you talked about confidence and I think that sometimes, um, you know, hits hard, you know, it does. Uh, when you, when you start emotional. to get, you know, when you start to get feedback that it's not what you expected, because again, everybody thinks that their, you know, product is, is perfect and, and they've invented it and, and they brought it to market and, you know, they're excited to start seeing sales and you are right, Peter, it, they're, you know, what, what people don't understand is that people are going to be negative just because they're negative to begin with, or they're envious, um, or they've thought of it and they're really upset that they didn't, they're not the ones that are bringing it to market. So if you've, if you're taking the time to, and this is even before you didn't even purchase the product and you're taking the time to bash somebody else's product, then generally speaking, you're just not, um, the I, type of person that I, I question again, everybody out there, do your own survey. Yep. Yeah. We've all bought products that have broken on the first time that we've used them. I personally don't have time to go and complain. Right. It's either return or it's just, okay, that's 15 bucks. I tried it, didn't work, and it's, it's, in, a, it's in a junk drawer somewhere. Right. Um, so, am I the one that's wrong? Am I the one that's different or is it, no. is it you know, everybody? No. And conversely, when you buy a great product, you're still not going to get a great review because those, people, those same people are still busy and you know, they're just happy they got a great product. Well, and, and, and so, this, this is actually what happens to, and again, this is for you inventors and entrepreneurs. It's not that you don't have confidence, but when someone starts questioning your product, you start getting into the fear mode. And fear is the kiss of death in business. Because if you're afraid of, if, if you start getting fear, it's just like in front of an animal. If you show fear in front of an animal, you're, you're done. You have to be, you have to go back to your confidence and say, look at that is somebody that just doesn't, it's not my customer. And you learn from it and you say, okay, why, why is that customer giving that, giving that review? You analyze it, but you realize that you've still got 10,000 units of product that does work for other people. Right. And the reason why it sucks in the beginning and, and why everybody goes to this pain point is because in the beginning, you don't have, the, the reams and reams of people that do love you. You're, and this is why, again, we don't spend tens of thousands of dollars in the beginning of advertising because we are slowly navigating to find the people who do like our product. Right. You, everybody out there from entrepreneurs turning into salespeople, you don't want to sell. You want the product to sell to people who want to buy it. The product should sell itself. And if you don't take the time to find that group of people that would buy your product happily, you're not, you know, no product is a general product purpose. Like, you know, even all purpose cleaner, someone's going to still want to buy the glass cleaner, right? They want to get specific. So you're not, there's no such thing as an all in one product where I, everyone's going to have, maybe ice cream is the only thing that comes closest, <laughs> right? Who doesn't like ice cream? But even then people who are lactose intolerant won't buy ice cream, <laughs> right? right? And, and so you, you have to go out and find the people who do like your product, right? And that's where they call it niche. And in today's world, Amazon supports niche. In fact, the more niche you are, the better advertising you can get to. So when you say find that group that would buy your product, how does that then tie into the data and analytic so part this, of- So this is where, you know, with, with let's say six months, and this is why we kind of do it at the six month right. level, is because then the marketing team, especially Nikki, who's come to this, she'll, she can tell you, all right, it's um, it's women that are age thirty four to fifty two, or thirty four to thirty six, or thirty two to to this age that are in this income bracket that have this many kids that drive this type of car that live in these rural communities or or urban communities, and you know she can pinpoint it down to a science. Now, wait, now this is where you actually now have what I call a business. When I know how to find the million people like this, I can start spending more money to scale up. If you start spending money in general audience, you are going to be bankrupt very quickly. The six months of, of spending to get data, right? So let's, let's say you invest $5,000 a month in, in advertising, and it doesn't have to be that. We, we have clients that start with $500 to $1,000, but you are not buying sales. You are buying the collection of data. You are buying an asset, just like you would if you went to what, are, what they did in the old days, like those opinion companies, right? Yeah. You'd spend $30,000 to have a bunch of people that don't want to be there. You're feeding them lunch to give you an opinion on a product, right? Okay. You're spending far less here now to find the people who actually want to buy your product, right? So, right. It's, it's like, you know, again, you, you go fishing and I keep going to the fishing analogy because my dad was a fisherman, but wherever you're going to go to find a group of people, you drop your bait in the water. And 
you drop it again, you try five, six things. And if you don't get a bite, you either got to change your bait or you got to move locations. Um, that's no different than being online, right? right? So when you, when you drop your bait and you get a, you, you, let's say you drop five baits and you get one nibble, but no, no fish, that's still enticing, right? right? Maybe I got to put more bait in there. And, and so, so you have to keep practicing in there. Um, again, the, the bait is, you know, your ad creative, your, your attempt is your ad spend. So every time I spend five dollars, I get a certain amount of attempts to say, "Okay, there's no fish here," or "Wow, that that's got some interest to it." And let's change the creative. Let's change the bait, and turn it into. Once you have that figured out, you know, wow, I can I can come here every time and spend X amount of dollars a day. I can guarantee myself certain amount of sales from that one fishing hole. That's it. You set your bait and you go on to the next one. You right. do that a hundred times, a thousand times, ten thousand times. Now what you have is a business that you can scale. You actually can wake up in the morning now and say, I want to sell 10,000 units a day. How much do I need to spend to right. get there? That's where the data and that's analytics where the data comes analytics. in. Right. Data and that's you, when you become a company that someone will purchase because they know what what that is. Like if I want to sell 100,000 units this year, this is, is how I have to back into it. That is the only thing people are buying to. That's, that's why the word customer acquisition cost is the number one topic. Like if you watch Shark Tank yeah. five years ago. That's the number well, two question right now. Well, it used to be the number one sales. What are your sales was the number one question. Yeah. The number one question now in Shark Tank in the last five years has been customer acquisition. Right. What is it costing you to acquire a customer? Right. Right, and that's data. And customer acquisition means that you're selling online. You wouldn't use so I, that, yeah, so, at retail. So yeah, it's just math. If I if I sold a thousand pro- products and I spent a thousand dollars, my customer acquisition costs a dollar. If, right. if I did, if I spent ten thousand dollars and I sold a thousand products, my customer acquisition cost is ten dollars right. per sale. Now. Keep in mind that your cost of acquisition at the beginning is going to be extremely high as you start to fish in those holes. Um, you are not going to get yeah cause, cause clients let's, to purchase let's, let's because say you might be in the wrong hole. Exactly. Because tw- well, <clears> it <throat> just might even be that 25% of the fishing holes I went to d- worked and the other 75 didn't. Right. So that cost got absorbed. But that's not what we're spending. That's why we do low spends to test those, right? right? And and so your CAC is going to be high. But it's, again, on a $1,500 spend, it's, you know, let's put it this way. We just got a quote from uh, a radio station. Right. Right. <laughs> you tell me what you get for $1,500 on a radio station. Right. One at, one at, you know, we got quoted, what, $5,500 for two weeks. For two weeks of ads and okay spots, not great spots. Right. So when you realize that you can be in the right place at the right time with low spends online, it's just, you've got to be there. But you have to have the expectation. You have to understand that you're building a business and there's, there's no fast way through it. Um, good example. We had a client who was very well funded, right? A, a um, I, I don't want to throw their names, but they were a you know venture capital company. They had no shortage of funds. They threw a lot of money in a lot of different things, and online sales does you don't grow it by throwing money. Right, and they at got it. frustrated, and it yep. didn't go as well as they would like, and and we yep. ended up buying that that brand. Yeah, we ended up with the brand, and, and now we went started off spending thirty dollars, uh, thirty sales per per month. Um, thirty sales per month, spending five hundred dollars. To today, I think we spend twenty two thousand yeah, five hundred dollars, and we generate over twenty two hundred products a month. Yeah, roughly about three thousand units yeah. sold. So, so, you know, very profitable. Uh, but it took time. You're right; it did yeah. take time. It doesn't happen overnight. Well, and some frustration, you know, because because it's 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 expectation. It's not frustration, right? Right. It's because the expectation is always well, like, yeah. I mean, I raise my hand. I'm, we're selling five hundred plus a week, and I'm still not satisfied. Well, that's why I said in the beginning. I said I don't care. You know, it depends. The people looking inward are going to go, wow. They just I can't believe they're doing that many sales. But right. the people actually conducting those sales are going, wow. I can't believe we're failing. Right. You know? And it, it's not. At the end of the day, um, it really. Is expectation and for us, look at I'll say this: I don't have a single client that I that we we don't believe their product actually needs to exist in the market, right? right. So, so on on our level, and I don't know the other people out there. I don't know what products you have. They're just listening, but for us, our clients, I am every single one of them. It's not a question of if they're going to sell; it's just when do you break through this this tipping point or get the data to support the growth quickly? And you know, in six months. Most, you know, again, that's that's really what what we have found it takes. Yeah. So the basis of this 
podcast, and I'm glad we did it today, yeah. is to just make sure that you understand that it, it nothing happens overnight, that it is a process. Um, it, and it's, it's a bumpy road, uh, but it's also very rewarding. Uh, but it does take time. I mean, you, you, you're not going to get rich in three months or six months. I mean, unless we get extremely lucky and go viral. Yeah. And even... And even in that case, we're not going to probably have enough product to support that. So, um, well, yeah. I'm going to just add one last thing, and then we can we can wrap this one up. But the um, going back to social media, I'm going to give everybody the something I got trained, you know, back in the car business days. And I don't care how negative your the comment that someone leaves you is, you always have to respond with the three words and create a sentence. I understand, I appreciate, and I agree. And you can never use the word but. So. I understand that that's how you feel, and I appreciate the feedback because we're a new company that's growing and we're learning. This is our first go round, and I will take under advisement. And I appreciate that I will actually work towards making the product better based on your comment. That's Perfect. it. Yeah. That, that, that's how you answer every negative comment. And and here's what it is: you're not trying to win the argument with one person. That's a waste of time. What you're trying to do is make sure that the rest of the world sees that you're a great company and wants to deliver in that manner, right. right? So someone sees that that comment's there, they now have to choose who is the bigger <laughs> or I, maybe I shouldn't say that. You can bleep that out. <laughs> the, the, the bigger, you can say asshole. The bigger asshole um, in, in that. And, you know, that's it. You're going to win the court of public opinion. Right. Great. Right. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, again, please click, like, follow, do all the things that you need to do. And mostly share this with any entrepreneurs that you have in your family and friends. Uh, if you are an entrepreneur group or if you've got uh, seminars that you're running, please share it. I'd love to. Uh, we'd love to actually be part of that as well and, and help uh, educate people that are bringing products to market. Right. At the end of the day, we think everybody is sitting on a million dollar idea that needs to get out there. Yeah, and also, by the way, we should mention we're in uh, three markets, soon to be four markets, yeah. uh, Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, and soon to be Dallas. Looking forward to meeting you all. Yeah.